over the past two decades, we really have been spending much more on emergency assistance than for fundamental agricultural development, including infrastructure. Um, and the, the dispar disparities are pretty large, um, $2 billion per year on average for food aid and emergency assistance versus 400 to 500 million for agricultural development. And we're seeing over the past year now, um, as a result, I think, of the, the food crisis and sort of realization that we can't continue to, um, to with this food aid pattern and only putting Band-Aids on, um, energy and resources into these longer-term agricultural development um, programs. That includes, um, for the U.S., um, more attention to the Millennium Challenge Corporation, um, which, as you may know, um, asks countries to define what it is, their key programs, what they would like to focus on for economic development. And we've been finding sort of amazingly that when countries have a choice in what to fund, they choose agriculture agriculture and agriculture-related infrastructure. So we found over the past um, several years that actually the Millennium Challenge Corporation in the U.S. has been the major funder in the U.S. government of African agricultural development. I think there's also, um, you know, we're seeing now a, a recognition both in the um, executive branch. Um, we had President Obama's commitment at the G20 meeting in April. Um, to double U.S. assistance for agricultural development, which is um, just incredibly um, inspirational for the community. I mean, we have not had a commitment at that level in my career in the past 30 years. We haven't heard that. So that's very important for us. Um, we know also that, that the Secretary Clinton is extremely committed to the idea of food security, and my colleagues in the State Department tell me that they are meeting on a, on a daily or every other day basis on food security, which is defined as agricultural development plus um, safety net approach. One key goal is definitely, I mean, how do we look at um, agricultural growth in the regional context and not just the national context? And I think that's important because it provides us with um, you know, a framework for collaboration among donors, um, among different countries and sort of really working through practical problems. What would it take to get, for example, the central corridor in, in Tanzania, you know, functioning well and actually delivering maize and delivering other kinds of export goods throughout the, the region? Um, that's one thing, and I think we're, we're on the way to that. Um, a second policy goal would be how do we look at development assistance um, so that it's much more responsive to demand and much less supply-driven? And that has implied in it, you know, much better coordination and collaboration. You know, even in the U.S. government agencies, you know, we know of countries that have nine to eleven different agencies um, that don't really know what their the, the left hand doesn't know that the right hand is doing. We need that kind of collaboration among our agencies and also with other uh, donor organizations. So that's key. I think the third thing really is um, figuring out what it means for us. What does agricultural development mean? Um, and I think that's still very fuzzy. Um, we have been discussing, a few of us, um, the transformative impact of the, the doing business um, for Africa, doing business in Africa indicators that's, that's done, renewed by the IFC every year. Um, and wondering about the feasibility of doing a kind of indicator series um, for African agriculture. Um, for agribusiness, you know, what does it mean to do agribusiness? What's progress in that? How long does it take to ship in fertilizer? How long does it take to get a, a seed variety release? We think we need a set of indicators also on the public expenditure side. Um, we're seeing a lot of energy coming from our, our African colleagues and their commitments to, to spend 10% of their national budgets on agriculture, but we're not quite sure what 10% means exactly. And it would be nice, I think, you know, for donors, but especially for um, civil society, private sector constituents, um, to have some sort of scorecard, a credible scorecard that says, well, you know, here was our marker last year, here's how we were doing on research, and here's the progress we've made this year or the next, next two years. And lastly, I'd say, um, you know, we're hopeful in this new renaissance, I think, of, of interest in agriculture that we will take a, a long-term view. Um, and not view progress as simply, you know, the delivery of, of a seed variety or the delivery even of a, of a road to an area, but sort of looking beyond and saying, who are the future leaders of tomorrow, um, the future African scientists of tomorrow, 
and how do we get them, and, and more importantly, how do we build the institutions that are going to keep that stream of scientists and researchers, um, extensionists, um, private sector people coming um, for time, uh, for time to come? How do we get the investments in, in these kind of fundamental institutions? How do we get support for that?